Okay, um, it's two o'clock, welcome. Um, my name is Louise Kirby, I'm a traditional astrologer and I'll be chatting to you today about um, 2021 and what, what to expect. Um, so I want to thank you for joining me and also um, thank you to the Cape Argus for giving us this opportunity and for giving me the opportunity to come and have a chat to you. Um, make yourself comfortable, um, get something to drink. Um, I, I want to take you on a journey this afternoon and um, chat to you about the planets and the cycles and how we've got to where we are currently. So let's just start off and um, first off, you know, astrology is the study of the planetary cycles. So that's really important because it helps us with timing and essentially astrology is a predictive tool. So it works on the timing of the um, planetary cycles. And the other thing to understand is that these cycles are continuously repeating themselves and there are many different things happening simultaneously and often there's a, um, a dominant cycle in a period of time. So these have been going on for eons and eons and eons. Um, and the other thing that I want to just say is that in nature, you know, nature always starts off with an initiating phase, then a stabilizing phase, and then a breaking down phase. So nature's way is also cyclical. And this is important, you know, for us to understand. Um, so if we think back to last year, which was clearly a very difficult year for, for, for everyone um, here in South Africa and, and across the rest of the world. Um, astrologers, many astrologers were, were particularly worried about last year and predicted war and or financial meltdown. And it's interesting that we've ended up in a war with a virus, an enemy that we can't see and that doesn't respect any of our man-made borders or boundaries. So this virus is everywhere. Um, and our response to the virus was to lock down, which of course has created um, enormous economic hardship in here in South Africa and across the world. Um, you know, the, there was a difficult um, a grouping of planets that came together last year, Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto. And Pluto particularly is the slowest moving and the most powerful and it is always associated with viruses, death, debt and taxation. And as you can see, all of those things have been things that we've had to confront, you know, in this past year. Death from the virus, um, you know, enormous hardship in terms of businesses, loss of businesses, um, people getting themselves into a huge amount of personal debt, businesses getting into debt, governments struggling because businesses are closed and there's less tax revenue. So it's all been, you know, a very sort of stressful scenario. Um, the, that cycle definitely, though, did complete at the end of November. And um, it's interesting just to think back at that time because um, it was a period when actually infections were surging in the northern hemisphere, which was expected because they were sort of heading into their winter period, but actually also in South Africa as we were heading into summer. So that was a little bit unexpected. Um, but it seems like, you know, in, in terms of understanding the, the data so far, is that the second wave was a mutation of the virus spread more rapidly and actually also the communities that had less immunity were the most affected you know the second time round so from a pandemic perspective um the 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 cycle concluded at the end of 2020 it's not to say that the virus disappears and Perhaps it's interesting to think about the language that we use around the virus, which is warlike, you know, defeating it. Um, and, you know, I, I suppose the thing is we're never going to defeat it. We're going to need to live with the virus. But obviously, as more people get immunity through natural infection and through vaccinations, you know, that, that's um, a viable prospect. 
So that's last year. 2021 looks very different astrologically to last year. And the main theme that is prevalent in 2021 is Saturn is squaring Uranus. And the cycle that we're currently in started in 1988. So there was a long time ago. Maybe some of you weren't even born then. I'm, you know, not sure. Um, but the, the previous complete cycle actually started in 1942 and ended in 1988. So, you know, 1942 was the start of what well, was in, in World War II. So the thing that I want to demonstrate to you is that these cyclicals are slow moving, you know, they unfold over a long period of time, they are generational, the change is slow but significant, and it's important that we understand that. So these cycles, this particular cycle is, um, you know, about 45 years long so that they're long they're long periods of time so in 1988 these two planets were connected and um, it was a very interesting time around the world because the soviet union was changing dramatically the iron curtain was falling that change was being felt in eastern europe in fact the berlin wall fell in the following year of november 89 and if you think about South Africa at the time, you know, we still actually were living under apartheid. We had the apartheid government and the ANC was still banned. And clearly, you know, the pressure was mounting across the world. And I think the ANC government realized that, particularly with the falling of the Berlin Wall. And you know, things gathered a momentum of their own and, you know, finally the ANC were unbanned in, in 1990. So there was a huge amount that was happening, you know, ac across the world in terms of vastly changing sort of political dynamics. I mean, interestingly, at that time as well, the World Health Organization set a goal for themselves to eradicate polio. Um, and the other thing that was happening in that time um, in South Africa was AIDS had been discovered in 1983. We had our first death in 1985, but it took a long time to get even any kind of like recognition for, for that um, disease and the hardship, hardship that it was you know, having in, in certain sort of communities. But in 1988, um, an advisory group was formed and its main agenda was to um, create um, AIDS awareness for, for South Africans. And interestingly, also in that time, um, the, the first sort of computer virus uh, uh, was, was discovered and it was called the worm. That was a long time ago and it's just interesting to sort of reflect um, you know, where, where this particular cycle started. So what happens in these cycles is that the planets move at different speeds. So Uranus moves much slower than Saturn. So it gets to a point in 1999 and 2000 where um, they are at a 90 degree aspect to one another and that creates tension. And that's what astrology is very powerful at doing is predicting points of change and that never happens when things are easy it always happens when things are tricky and things are difficult and it's interesting to think back at, at that time because um, you know the big sort of drama was Y2K and everyone was really concerned that the computers weren't going to be able to manage the changeover of the, the calendar dates to 2000 and actually that ended up being, you know, not nearly as dramatic as people had anticipated and because most of the software was updated and, and things you know, navigated quite fine. But, you know, at the time Bill Gates was talking about smartphones changing the world, PayPal was an idea that seemed really out there, um, you know, DVDs replacing VHSs, you know, there was talk about 
you know, books and music going online, but nothing had happened yet. And actually, remarkably, that was only 20 years ago. So even the internet was, you know, in its infancy at that point in time. Um, the, the West was getting, um, you know, more and more concerned about um, threat of terrorism. And obviously, in this period led up to, um, you know, September um, 11, 2001, with the, the um, Twin Towers coming down. But in South Africa, um, what, was, what was happening was that Thabo Mbeki became our president and Zuma his deputy. And, and actually, in the time between this first cycle, 88, and now, in the meantime, we've actually become a, a democracy. So, I mean, that's a, a, a massive change. You know, the apartheid government it was, it was over, and we've now come a, become a constitutional democracy. And actually, in this period of 99 and 2000, we've already had our second president. Um, and the other thing that was really interesting at that time was was that the treatment action campaign had been formed the year before and and they were you know putting a huge amount of pressure on government to provide treatment to hiv uh, patients and and that pressure um you know was important and significant for government to to change um policy so more time you know passes and in 2008 and 2009, these planets are opposite one another. And that will be remembered for the global financial crisis. Um, also positively for um, President Obama being you know, elected the first black president of, of, of America. But in our own country, you know, there was, it was a difficult time because Mbeki was recalled in 2008 and Zuma finally became president in 2009. So there was a lot of instability, you know, at that um, point in time. Um, you know, Facebook was the biggest um, social media platform in, in, in that time, having only launched in 2004, and Instagram was, was launched in, in 2010. So the, the impact on social media was, was um, you know, becoming more evident um, and and um, yeah interesting so we're now at a point in 2021 um, where Saturn is squaring Uranus and this is the, the the last period before the cycle concludes in 2032 and this period has strong correlations to um, 1976, what was happening in South Africa then. And, you know, the apartheid government was, was well entrenched. And that period of 76 will be remembered very much for the Soweto riots. And, you know, the, the, the protests came from the youth. And that's important for us to understand in the current sort of um, setup. And I guess the, 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 diff, the, the tricky thing that we're struggling with at the moment is not apartheid, it is state capture and corruption and the impact of these things on service delivery for ordinary people. And, um, and in all likelihood, the pressure is going to come from the youth um, to hold leadership accountable, um, ordinary people. So there are a few important dates in this cycle, and one was yesterday, the 7th of February, um, middle of June, and the end of December. So this period is going to last for the, the whole of this year. And it's also happening in the signs of um, Taurus and Aquarius. So all the fixed signs, those are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius, are all going to be affected um, particularly with this um, transit, particularly those that are born closer to the beginning of the of the month. And, I mean, they're called the fixed sign um, for a reason, because they don't really like change. And, I mean, if there's a cycle that's requesting change, it's this one. 
So what is the message that we need to take out from um, you know, this particular period? And that is that we need to all take personal and collective responsibility to create a better society for all of us. Um, I mean, what are the things that we can be hopeful for in 2021? And the remarkable thing is the vaccination program. Um, I mean, it's remarkable in terms of the time. It's never ever in the history of humanity have we developed a vaccine as quickly as this one. And it's not like we have one. We have a number of, of, of options to consider. Obviously, the challenges will be if the virus mutates and the vaccines um, are not, not as um, efficient. But interestingly, I said to you yesterday was a critical day, and yesterday was the first day when A, our president got vaccinated and some of the healthcare workers. So that's an auspicious um, start. But the thing that the vaccination program is highlighting, not in, only in South Africa, but also um, you know, globally, is that for this process to be equitable, it needs to be, we, we need to have fair distribution across wealthy nations and poorer nations. And, um, and even within societies, we, we need everybody to get vaccinated, whether they are rich or poor, because actually, ultimately, nobody is uh, uh, truly safe unless, unless everybody you know, um, gets, gets vaccinated. So that's, that's a challenge, um, but it's also an opportunity for us to, to change things. Um, you know, I've been sort of demonstrating to you that there's a thread, you know, in, in connection to the internet and um, communication in this time. And, you know, if you think back to 2000, when the internet was, what only really became available to the general public in the early 90s. So, you know, 2000 it was still very naive, actually. And if you think about the incredible um, strides we've made to you know, um, improve um, the, the, the tool and access to the tool. And it's been remarkable for certain communities who've been able to work from home and educate children from home and businesses that have been able to pivot and go online um, with delivery options, et cetera, et cetera. But once again, you know, it's highlighted that there's a massive divide between rich and poor and and um, and ultimately, we need to move forward. We need to broaden the access, you know, to all this um, innovation and all this um, technology. And and there are very interesting, um, you know, possibilities, you know, for education, um, for a multitude of things, which which would be, you know, wonderful going forward. Um. You know, and I mentioned in 2000 that Bill Gates was talking about smartphones changing the world. He's now talking about climate change and the urgency, you know, around climate change. Because I think the message last year was that we're on an unsustainable path. You know, we, we have to sort of fundamentally change our ways. And he's worried about climate change and once again the impact on poorer countries. Because poorer countries aren't um, creating the emissions, but they're affected by the wealthy countries and all the emissions. Um, you know, 2021 looks very tricky, you know, from a political perspective in, in South Africa. Um, and, you know, our, our biggest crisis currently is state capture and the Zonda Commission and the impact that this is having on service delivery. Um, and it's interesting that, you know, Zuma is a thread in this, in this whole cycle. You know, he became deputy president in 99. In 2009, he became president. And now in 2021, he needs to present himself to the Zondo Commission, which he clearly doesn't want to do. So it'll be interesting to find out, you know, I wonder, has Zuma not taken it one step too far? But it's important that the law takes its course and what is really important for all of us to understand is, is that actually we need to defend our constitutional democracy. So we need to protect our constitution and we need to protect our democracy. Um, 
so what can we expect going forward? Um, Saturn is a, is a planet that speaks about duties and responsibilities. It's a planet that likes traditional things. It likes the tried and tested. It um, likes order and process. Uranus, on the other hand, is, is, is completely different in nature. It, it thrives on freedom and independence. It loves risk. It, um, it embraces technology and innovation. And so you can see how I'm describing these two things. They come up like vastly different, actually. And, and there's no doubt that pressure is going to come from the youth because they're less invested in the system. They've got less to lose, actually. Um, and what we must expect is social change and disruption, you know, um, possibly civil unrest, if we're thinking back to the sort of analogy between 2021 and 1976, you know, it was a very sort of volatile time in society, but it was important in terms of putting us on a trajectory to democracy. And perhaps now the important thing is to get on top of state capture and corruption and actually put us on a path where we can deliver to the people, which is part of the government's mandate. So we, we also going to need to embrace technology and innovation to help facilitate and drive this change in, in society. It really is the right time to be um, doing this and embarking on this journey. And, you know, the astrology also talks about the fact that it's important that we bold, you know, we need to be brave, we need to take risks as individuals and collectively. Um, and, um, and it's a fantastic time to, to become a sort of social activist, you know, if you think about um, groups like the TAC, the Treatment Action Campaign, and all that they achieved in the AIDS space. Um, and there's so many amazing causes that we could all get involved at, not necessarily joining a group or creating a group, but just actually on our own, you know. So whether the thing is climate or power or plastic or litter or food gardens or access to food or healthy food, um, health and well-being, um, you know, um, protecting our constitution, focusing on gender-based violence, um, alcohol problems, drug problems, I mean, education, they're just a gazillion things that we can actually all um, get involved in. So, you know, my question to you is, um, if you think about those youngsters in 1976, they took to the streets and marched for education. What are we going to march for in 2021? We all need to find something. Um, and it very well might be a time where, you know, there's something in your life that's not going well. And, you know, whether it's your job or your relationship or, or something like that. And it, it might be very appropriate to make a significant change. Um, and I think the other thing just to sort of say is that we, um, we must appreciate on some level that we're, there's enormous amount of stress and tension and grief around um, and and sometimes it's important to just uh, you know get back to the basics and breath work is always really important in terms of reducing tension and it improves well-being so focusing on breath work would be an interesting thing at this time and you know, the cry around COVID was, I can't breathe. And the cry around Black Lives Matter was, I can't breathe. And, you know, and nature saying, I can't breathe. Um, so we, we need to create space, but we also need to create space individually. And um, so that might be an interesting thing for, for, for us to do, because clearly this COVID virus is also, you know, been shining a bright light on, on, on well-being and the importance of being healthy and the, the difficulties that you have if you're elderly or if you've got comorbidities. 
And I think the other thing that we need to get back to in some way is connection with people that care about us and that we care about them. And, um, you know, February is the month of love, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic love. It could be a friendship, but it's just really important that somebody has your back and that you can be there for, for somebody else. So even in these times of social distancing and masking, we need to recognize that we are human beings. We need connection. We thrive on connection. And, um, and it, it gives us hope. So um, that's the message that I would like to leave you with today. Thank you. Thank you for um, tuning in. It was wonderful to connect with you. And um, hopefully there's um, food for thought and, um, you know, it's practical things that you can do in your own life to um, navigate the, the disruptive and yet exciting year of 2021 ahead. Take care. Thank you. Bye.